I'm getting ready to fluid balance these big uh, 1420 tires on the M923 because it, you know, it hops a bit. And what I'm going to use is an old farm trick. Now, instead of salt water, I'm putting in antifreeze. And I'm putting in about a pint of antifreeze. I suspect I'll need double that much, but I prefer to start a little smaller. Before you begin flaming, it's not really important that you don't understand why it works, but I can assure you that it does work. And that fluid balancing has been, it's been a part of agricultural life where I fill tires with fluid so that they weigh more the result of which is that they self-balance and then the heavy truck industry where typically they don't put fluid in the tires they have metal rings it also just so you know is the exact same way your washing machine balances itself at spin cycle fluid balance so again it's not important that you understand why it works but let me assure you it does work first step here is to put a jack under the truck and get ready to let the air out. So what I have here is a bottle jack set up so that the truck itself can drop about two, two and a half, three inches onto the jack itself. Now I'm going to pull the valve core. What this will do obviously is let the air out of the tire. It will also put a huge bulge in it. Then when I jack the tire back up, it will suck antifreeze into itself. You haven't got to do a thing. Trust me. You'll thank me if you do it this way instead of pulling them, breaking them, and pouring it, or trying to dribble it down a valve stem core. Just get your valve core removal tool and pull that core out of the stem. You want the bottom of your antifreeze jug to be at the height or higher than the valve stem core itself. And your piece of rubber tubing must fit over your valve stem very snugly because you don't want it to have any leaks. I'm going to go ahead and insert my tubing on there and then I'm going to jack the truck up. And when that tire flexes back down, it'll suck the antifreeze in and you'll watch it start a siphon. It's important to note, you can't rush this. You have to wait for that tire to stop poofing even the smallest amount of air. Otherwise, it's just going to bubble and make a mess. The process is relatively fast. You just now have to let your tire drink all the antifreeze it wants. This is mixed 50-50. It's just some... It actually, despite the color, was used. It was used in a heater, not a car. I'm not sure it matters, but it was used. 50-50 mix. That'll be plenty good to keep it from, from slushing up in, in our neck of the woods. Uh, if you're somewhere else. I don't know. I also would consider using RV antifreeze if I live somewhere warm because at least that you don't have any worries of poisoning and it's it's cheap. You know it's cheap. You use it straight. Problem is for us up here that stuff slushes and while that's fine in a camper I don't think big clumps of slush flipping around in there are, are gonna help your problem. So it hasn't taken too long and we've already sucked up about half a jug. I'll get over there, I'll tip the jug and cram the hose into the very deepest corner to let it suck as much as it can. That is all there is to it. Fill the tire back up, 
most of the way anyways, then put the valve stem back in it, try not to shoot it across the lawn, and then fill it the rest of the way up, and uh, test her out. Like I said, I, this is the minimum of what was recommended to me for the size of these tires. Probably should have double what I just put in, but I'm going to give her a test, I'll report back the results, give her a good test, and we'll see if this is enough. If not, I'll have to come back and do this again, but as you can see, it doesn't take very long. Not when you let the tire suck up its own antifreeze. If, if you're going to pull that off and flop it down and dribble it in with a funnel, you'll be here. Hey, hey, hey! You'll be here forever. This, trust me, is the fastest way you'll ever see.